My name is Joseph Wunderlich. I'm a professor of engineering, architecture, and computer science. This is a lecture on architectural and engineering comfort, uh, thermal comfort, and health. This is different than you would find in a typical thermodynamics engineering course, in that it's applied to architecture, but also has a biology in it too. Uh, I've had several courses in biology and chemistry, but I am not a professor of that, so we're just going to stick with the basics. So first of all, we want to look at the human body and the input and output to the human body, uh, the gases and the uh, liquids that come in and out, and then the uh, skin and internally how we uh, use energy and uh, temperature, delta T means temperature change, and uh, how that works. So you can take a look at all that. I'm not going to read all of this here. Uh, I, videos are a little faster than in the class where we'll take the time to perhaps stop and talk about some of these things. Um, electromagnetic radiation uh, on, on the body uh, can cause cancer, DNA damage, um, damage your eyesight. However, uh, UVC is believed to, or it can kill Ebola, uh, and believed to uh, uh, help fight COVID through vitamin D leading to vitamin D. This is a Google Scholar uh, list of citations talking about vitamin D and can maybe help prevent COVID. This slide I made right at the beginning of COVID, I'm sure there's more recent studies since then. Some statistics showing correlation between and vitamin D in the population. Cases in the population versus vitamin D. So UVC, uh, we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, is within the ultraviolet band. Uh, heat's down here in infrared. This is the visible spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. You see in color here, based on fact that we are creatures around um, our sun that burns at this temperature, so we would develop to see this range. But ultraviolet is uh, used for decontamination. There's a slide, I won't put this here, probably won't uh, during the lecture. Maybe, maybe if we have a lot of time, we'll go into this. This is a very long lecture on humanity and different things, good and bad, uh, but technology. This was, uh, I made this a number of years ago. And this is a, a robot used to uh, fight Ebola. This is um, a HVAC system where there's UV lights within the system uh, that will kill the uh, disease. <clears throat> And some citations, peer-reviewed citations. Google Scholar is uh, better than Google for higher quality peer-reviewed citations. In this slide, there's uh, images from the textbook. And you see uh, a car and a human. Uh, the first slide I have uh, is a little more detail of, uh, with the heat gain and loss with the human and convection radiation. Types of heat, and then uh, in a car they have similar things with the exhaust and the air intake and uh, radiating uh, heat from the engine and conduction with the road. And in this graph over here, you see um, heat rates, brittle British thermal units (BTUs) per hour uh, for the human body, and as temperature increases, and this curve here sloping down is um, heat loss due to a combination of radiation and convection with the body. So uh, evaporative cooling, for example, air blowing over your body, and then the conduction through your skin and the heat going into the uh, air that's blown over your body. And so that uh, decreases as heat temperature, as the temperature, ambient temperature in the room uh, increases. And then uh, perspiration, uh, though uh, your heat loss through perspiration is increasing, as temperature increases 
or anywhere outside also, uh, wherever you are. Uh, and this here we see basal metabolic rate um, and uh, for the human body. And you can see that um, there's uh, heat loss due to perspiration, which is uh, imperceivable here. This is at a constant rate. It's not due to sweat, but just the, cellular, the skin cells. And then there's two curves. Heat, this uh, black curve here, is uh, due to radiation, um, convection and conduction. And then the red curve is dry heat loss. Uh, and a couple important notes here is uh, hypothermia, uh, which you normally associate with uh, cold and cold death below a certain temperature. Uh, hypothermia also uh, corresponds to heat death of a certain temperature. And then you have a comfort point here. This is in Celsius, so they have here uh, 26 degrees approximately, uh, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. More on uh, basal metabolic rate and uh, here, thermal barriers, of course, close um, the body, in canopy beds, uh, buildings, um, which is the primary focus of what we're talking about here. And then we have a, a kind of a baseline here of 400 BTUs per hour, and then that can be increased uh, or decreased. Sleeping is decreased a little bit, but all activities would be uh, increasing that uh, light walking, walking, jogging. And then you can see uh, for different creatures here and where we are and uh, how some creatures really uh, have a very high basal metabolic rate. So uh, the thermal conditions of our environment. So we have our ambient air temperature, and this is a you know, rate of change, you know, dt of your body versus uh, the temperature is a function of the temperature of the air. And then we have relative humidity. So when we're designing for buildings, we need to consider humidity. And so the change in your body temperature is a function of relative humidity. And we'll talk about humidity in detail in a second here. But in general, some important things to note, uh, good multiple choice type of uh, answers here. For comfort, relative humidity in the summer uh, between 20 and 60 and in the winter between 20 and 80. Um, low relative humidity, uh, we get a dry nose and uh, respiratory problems, wound shrinkage. Uh, high relative humidity, um, it can be uh, hard to, uh, to keep cool and uh, mold and mildew happen. That's very important for design considerations. And um, also, the air will saturate at some point, and then you will not be able to have the heat to get off of your body very easily. So, some now design uh, now some design considerations: air movement, the change in the temperature in your body is a function of uh, of convection and conduction, evaporation, and uh, it's good good in the summer. Uh, air movement. Um, cools you off, but bad in the winter. Uh, wind chill factor and the drafts uh, in buildings. You don't put your bed under a window, for example. Uh, mean radiant temperature. We talked about this for comfort in chapter three and has to do with the proximity to sources. It's best if the heat is evenly distributed. Um, uh, hot water loop radiators rather than uh, electric kind of heaters. Uh, radiant floors, um, not a pot belly stove or electric wire heaters, which are intense uh, point sources. It's better to evenly distribute. Um, and then psychometric charts. So we need to understand these. So basic, and we'll design from these. So the uh, coordinates, uh, the axes of the graph are uh, temperature of the air, and then specific humidity, which is the actual amount of water in the air. And then the relative humidity are, will be curves on this graph, there'll be a whole lot of curves, and you look for intersections of curves. And the relative humidity is a function of temperature and the maximum water um, 
air that can uh, hold in the specific humidity. And at 100% relative humidity, uh, sweat can't evaporate. So when the air is completely saturated, uh, you can't uh, sweat efficiently. So we want to learn how to use these psychometric charts to design buildings. And uh, firstly, we need to understand the chart. So we have relative humidity. Uh, relative humidity are these curves, as mentioned in the previous uh, slide. And then specific humidity on this axis, and temperature on this axis. And for example, this point A here, uh, the air sample, uh, has a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, a relative humidity of 40% along this curve here, and an actual moisture content of about 0 0.009 pounds of water per pound of dry air here. Specific humidity. So this slide's just explaining that um, uh, changes in temperature and moisture of a sample of air are re represented by movement on the psychometric chart, wetter versus drier, uh, colder versus hotter. Here is an example where, uh, by design, we are heating you know, using our heating engineering and architectural methods. Um, and in doing so, it shows that we can uh, lower the relative humidity, how that feels comfort-wise, lower that without any change in the moisture content. Conversely, we can design a system uh, to cool, a uh, cooling system, HVAC system and uh, raise the relative humidity with no moisture content change. Variations in relative humidity throughout the country. So if you traveled or uh, lived in a number of places here, so we are here now in the Northeast, uh, you can see the variations. Um, in the deep south, this intense uh, relative humidity can get to you. I've felt that in Texas, especially if you get down there in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, also, when you're in a desert, it's very dry, and that certainly can add to comfort. So now we want to understand the dew point, uh, the temperature. Uh, at a relative humidity of 100% for a fixed specific humidity, a fixed specific humidity corresponding to a 100% relative humidity curve. And uh, this is a temperature at which water will condense out of the air. So you can see that on windows, on a glass of water. This also happens within the building cavity, within the wall. You have to control for that with your design decisions. So you can see an example here where the um, temperature is cooled and the relative humidity, or, you know, for a given specific humidity, the temperature is cooled until we reach this saturation point, this dew point, and at a given temperature. And if we keep cooling beyond that, uh, we will dehumidify the air. So that's a HVAC design thing to do. So now we want to discuss a way to measure relative humidity with a sling psychrometer. And so we have a temperature wet bulb and temperature dry bulb. And uh, we'll watch a little video of that. If um, I'm playing this in lecture, we'll come back to this and we'll watch the video at the end. Um, it contains two thermometers, one covered with a wet sock and the other uh, just 
exposed to the dry air and you swing the thing around and it measures um, one temperature relative to the other temperature. And then it gets a little complicated on the graph here where you can see the lines of uh, it was not complicated understanding it in itself, but the graph begins to get covered with other lines. We're going to put other lines on this too, depending on uh, some other things we're looking at <coughs> on our psychometric chart. So now we want to uh, look at an example here. Now this is a psychometric chart with the uh, wet bulb temperatures shown here. The previous slide had the dry bulb temperatures. This is the wet bulb temperatures. And so the way you can do this is on a very dry day, um, for example, with relative humidity of 20%, uh, you use your sling psychrometer and you get a, t a temperature of wet bulb of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You read off of the uh, instrument, and you want to guess what the T dry bulb should be. So you follow the line of, um, of the 50 degree Fahrenheit T wet bulb until it intersects the 20% relative humidity curve. And then you drop down and read the temperature off of the axis here, and that is your uh, dry bulb temperature. Uh, this video here we'll watch outside of class time. Um, perhaps time permitting, we'll watch some of it in the class, but you can see how a professional would use this. So now we want to talk about the heat content of the air as opposed to the moisture content. And so we want to define enthalpy which is the sensible heat plus the latent heat. So recall from our previous lecture that the sensible heat is the uh, heat stored and the latent heat uh, is the heat needed to change state between liquid gas solid and pearl. That is a function of moisture. So the total heat is the combination of those two and we have these lines of constant enthalpy that now we're going to put those over top of our psychometric charts. So for design purposes, for example, we want to heat and humidify the air. So we're heating it up this way and humidifying it. So the result is this vector here. And that's going to result uh, in a change of total heat. Now, if we're designing um, for evaporative cooling, for example, blowing fans on people um, would be an example of that. Um, that is an adiobotic, sometimes pronounced adiobotic, but adiobotic. And that's where you have um, equal sensible and latent heat so that you're just staying on this line of constant enthalpy. And as a footnote here for those interested uh, in the mechanical engineers in, in my typical classes where I teach this, an adiobotic process would be uh, an engine, a perfect heat engine, and uh, the work mechanical work of the combustion engine produced.
So at about a cooling again of people using only a fan maybe here. Um, and then when we heat and humidify the air is like this. Cool and dehumidify, it's like this. So we get a conceptual feel of the graph, of the psychometric chart, and how we follow the different lines at adiabatic processes versus the other two design examples we just looked at. Uh, this is an adiabatic evaporative cooler. And this is most suitable for low relative humidity regions here. Go back and take a look at the details of this. Um, adding water because it's too dry uh, where you live. And uh, more details here. And this only works so well in certain regions, very dry regions. Uh, advantages, no refrigerants, completely natural cooling process. So this would be, uh, it is active versus passive uh, cooling, but um, less so uh, technically complex, which we prefer when we first design, is to keep it simpler at first. No use of recycled air. So the problem we talked about with air exchanges in the previous chapter could be uh, also addressed with this. So now thermal comfort. And uh, how that varies for our design and how we want to approach this. So we're going to look at our psychometric charts and we're going to define a region, as I mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, and then how we move that. You know, this, this varies you know, where the comfort region is based on temperature and humidity uh, for different purposes for your architecture, as well as regions of the country. So we want to begin with a baseline. Initially assume um, air motion is minimal. Uh, we want to assume a constant mean radiant temperature we talked about. Um, and minimal variations in baseline, uh, min minimal variations of culture, um, the amount of fat on people, clothing, uh, the amount of physical activity, uh, the age, overall health, and the uh, seasons. Uh, if people are uncomfortable, uh, people waste more energy architecture may fail. People are uncomfortable, both in an engineering sense and an architectural sense, which includes psychology too. Now we want to talk about the comfort zone and how uncomfortable it is outside of that zone, whether you're hot and dry or cold and wet. And so there's a, a region, uh, an envelope here, that's the comfort zone. And that also uh, can vary by season, summer and winter. This is a very important slide. So we have our baseline envelope of comfort based on uh, assumptions, and now we want to uh, deviate from those assumptions. So we see uh, for every mean radiant temperature fluctuation of plus or minus uh, three degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we want to adjust the air temperature in the opposite direction. Um, and here, but for uh, every plus or minus variation in air speed um, of uh, 15 degrees, 
our comfort will drop one degree Fahrenheit. For an increase in physical activity, comfort um, uh, temperature in the air will drop. And um, for seasonal variations, we shift the chart as we saw previously. So you can see some changes in uh, an envelope based on different conditions. Now we're going to see this uh, for different specific sites in the next chapter. And so I won't go into detail here. Uh, use the passive HVAC again to mitigate COVID. And some details will come back in the paper later here. Again, there's comfort outside of the zone. And now specific things. So this is what we're going to see for different climates, um, regions. A number of them in the United States, we're going to pick a number and analyze them closely and how to move this envelope, design for changes in this envelope based on a number of conditions. And uh, the sun line here prevents sun from entering building with temperatures above this uh, a shade line. Shade line. And these are some standards. American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers uh, is an international standard. It's American, but it's pretty much adopted um, internationally. And uh, this is a case study here we can go back and take a look at uh, later uh, and just see for the specific location. Pakistan and uh, their data and their design conclusions that they make what to do. Um, and then, time permitting in class or outside of the class here, perhaps as an assignment, um, you click on this and it's an active psychometric chart. You can play with the parameters and watch how it changes.